Shalom. Shalom. And once again, uh, to the 12 tribes of Israel worldwide, uh, Shalom. It is good to be here uh, tonight after last week. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> I was some kind of sick. But the Most High is kind and uh, allowed us to, to make it here today. So I'm excited about that. Um, tonight, I have a very interesting subject title. And the, the uh, subject title is the word division. But before we do that, I want to actually uh, begin by reading a verse that um, is about unity. So would you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4? Ephesians 4, and uh, we're going to begin Ephesians 4, verse uh, 1. I just want to read this as a starter of the message tonight. I therefore, prisoner of Yahuwah, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you're called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Ruach in the bond of Shalom. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in hope of your calling, one master, one faith, one baptism, one Elohim, and Abba of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Elohim unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of fullness of Hamashiach. Verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Hamasiah from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working of the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, I want to go right here. This I say, therefore, I testify and testify in Yahuwah, that you henceforth walk not as other, come on, roll with me. Gentiles. As other Gentiles walk. You see that? 
in the vanity of the mind, of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Yah through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feelings has given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with ungodliness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very interesting passage that we know as the passage on unity. Um, and I'm speaking about division. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about the importance of it, of it in a moment, but one of the uh, major issues that it seems that we're facing in the awakening is this onslaught of false teaching and false doctrine, if you want to use those terms, uh, that's rising up among Hebrews. Not, not so much about what's already in the world, because we already know that the Gentiles have always taught wrong. That's just, that's just their, their culture is not, is not a Torah-based culture. But we are having issues amongst the in the awakening in the awakening because of the fact that our people do not know Torah. They don't know the teaching of the Bible. Matter of fact, they don't even know the definition of Torah, which I'm going to give it to you. It's the word for instructions. It's the word of instructing someone according to the laws and the statutes and the commandments, the prophets, the writings of our holy manuscript. And unfortunately, in direct contrast to the scripture we've read, we are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and cunning craftiness, sleight of hand. What we just read was that Yah gave us certain people, certain offices that were fulfilled by certain people for the very point or the very reason that we wouldn't be tossed to and fro. But unfortunately, the people who claim to be leaders in Zion are the ones actually tossing us to and fro. Unfortunately, we got people claiming to be prophets and apostles and teachers and pastors who are not strengthening the, the, the family, they're causing division. They're causing more problems than they are good. And it seems like every day we get more and more ridiculous, uh, unbiblical teaching amongst the awakening remnant. And therefore, I'm starting to realize something. I'm realizing that a lot of people who are claiming to actually be leaders in Zion are not leaders in Zion. After all, they're working for Hasatan, the devil. When you read this text, it, in verse 11 of chapter 4, it says, and he gave some apostles. So not everybody claiming to be an apostle is one, because if you're not teaching the scripture, and if you're not a branch from the original tree, teaching the same thing that was taught in the beginning, then you are what's called a false apostle. And there was a church in the book of the Revelation that the Hamas that Hamashiach literally said, 
I commend you because you've tried those who claim that they were apostles and are not. You found them out to be liars. You found out that they had an agenda. And the agenda was not the agenda or the biblical agenda of Yah. Some apostles, you got some people claiming to be prophets and prophesying and teaching outside the word. No good. And some evangelists, that's the people out on the streets. All of these people, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the purpose of them is to perfect the saints. Not to make themselves look good, not to try to like blow up their individual ministry. This, this, this is not about making a name for yourself. The text is clear when it says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry to edify the body. That's what it's about. Zion. And so, and so what we have, unfortunately, amongst the awakening remnant is false apostles, false prophets, false teachers, false preachers, false pastors. And these people are doing the exact, the result is our people are being tossed. The result is we are not coming to the unity of the faith. There's only one master. There's only one faith. And there's only one baptism or one cleansing. All right. So having laid that down as a foundation for the study, I'm going to let you know where I'm going with this. Because the perfecting of the body of Hamashiach, who is us, by the way, is not necessarily going to look like what most people think this perfection is going to look like. Let me say it like this. The perfection of the body of the Hamashiach is not going to look like everybody all of a sudden all just got along. And now we all just one big happy family. No, 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 no. It's, 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 that's a dream. It's not getting ready to happen. It's false. The truth of the matter is you will see the perfecting of the saints when you start seeing, watch this, perfect division. You will see the results of true Torah study, when you start seeing biblical division, when you start seeing spiritual separation, do you get what I'm saying? When the body starts to wake up, you won't notice you won't, you won't know that it's woke because everything is now united. You will know that there is a change taking place based on what you individually and as a body, you separate yourself from. Did you catch that? Uh, let's take it to the elementary level. Let's take it to the most surface level. Um, everybody that we grew up around, unfortunately, they ate pigs, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is just elementary level. I'll, I'll get deeper in a moment. But, but as soon as you said, I'm not eating pigs anymore, you made a decision to separate yourself from something and as a result of you separating your, your uh, eating habits from other people or whatever, 
immediately some people separated from you because you made a decision to separate from a nasty pig. Right. You, you didn't say, I don't want to be around you, but when you said, I don't want to eat pigs anymore, that statement that you made and stood on it made you an object of ridicule among certain people who decided, well, if you're not going to eat pigs, I don't want to hang with you. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. So as you begin to walk or wake up to your identity, identity, it will not, your identity, your identity will not be readily recognized simply because of your new association. Most of the time, your, your identification will be a result of your separation. You will start being defined on how you divide and separate yourselves from certain things, certain behaviors, and believe it or not, certain people. Unity in the text is never about unity at all costs. Unity in the text is always about unifying on Torah, period. I'm willing to unify with you if we both are willing to unify with the word. But the reason that I need pastors, preachers, leaders, apostles, prophets, and all that is so that they can teach me how to walk a separated life, which is the root word for the word holy. <laughs> and so, and so, and, and, and so Zion, uh, I want to show you that this concept of separating and dividing is not a new concept, but that the very principle of it is found in the first book of the Bible. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to touch a few more background verses and then we'll be out. But I want to talk about spiritual division. I want to talk about dividing based on the Ruach, based on on Yah spirit, Yah's breath. Turn, turn with me to that first book. We're going to try to help Zion understand that division is literally built into the fabric of creation. That it is the principal element. It's a principal element in the beginning of all things. You're going to discover that unlike what a lot of false religions teach, Yah has never had it in his mind that there is unity at all costs. And because we have been separated from the book of Genesis, unfortunately, many of us have no clue about our foundation. This is where it all starts. You develop the mindset of the Hamashiach by studying this, Genesis. And if you start seeing Genesis from the eyes of, the, of, of Yah, who really gave it to our uh, uncle Moshe, then you will begin to understand that y'all don't have a problem with division. As a matter of fact, dividing things is par for the course with him. Let's look at it. Genesis chapter 1. Y'all got it? That should be an easy one. First page of the book. <laughs> Roll with me, y'all. Let's roll. Watch it. In the beginning, which you all know that word by now, is what? Barashit. Barashit. And of course, it comes from the root word rush, which is the idea of head. 
or first. Uh, it's the idea when it comes to time, it is the chief part in the beginning, how this thing all starts. Elohim, which is from the, from the uh, root word ah, where we get the Aleph and the Lamet. You already know that, most of you. And the Aleph represents the ox. The Lamet represents um, leadership or instruction. So put the two together, you get strong leader. And of course, as you continue to, to discover that word, you will see that he becomes what we call our most high power. He created, and that word, I gave it to you before, it means to fatten. Bara. And of course, what did he fatten? The heaven. Oh, first, Aleph Tav. The Aleph, the strong ox. The Tav is a mark. And so therefore, creation is not just Accidental creation has an aim. It has a goal. It's 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 towards something. And then the the word there for heaven, the shamaim or the sham, the shamaim, has to do with the breath. It has to do with the expanse. It comes from our from the root of shem. And we'll we'll talk about that a little later because because it starts to deal with character and some other things. The heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. You see it? Mm -hmm. And void. Let's pause and let's examine these words hebraically. The word for earth there, you Hebrew students, is what word? Right, right, the earth, arets, arets. And the idea of, of arets or arets, um, the root of that has to do with a pot shard. And it's like little broken pieces of, of pottery. And the, 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 the funny thing about that is, is that um, it's broken pieces of earth. And what they would do back in the day is that they would use those broken pieces of pottery, put notes on them, they'd write on them, and then they would send like little messages to people. It was like an early form of a sticky note or a notepad. <laughs> and so therefore, even in the beginning of the, of the earth, you see that Yah is getting ready to put his signature, if you please, on this planet that this earth itself will become something that he will mark himself. And then he will put a message on it himself. It also has to do with the fact that the people of this planet will be broken up into pieces. The land at one time will be divided. We'll study that later when we get to chapter 10. But the land gets divided or broken up like pottery and people will be broken up like pottery also. Because the earth itself, that very word, literally has to do with crushed pottery. It's potsar. And so when you, when you talk about the actual quote-unquote land, you will see that from the beginning that the land mass is broken. Okay? So he creates the heaven and the earth. And the earth was, and here's a very interesting word, without form. So I need you all to write this word down. It's the root word. Het. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, tav he. Tav he is the root. It's not the word used there. It's the root of the word that's used there. And the word means to ignore or waste. 
And I guess if you were to put it in like regular terms, it would be uh, to consider something of, of, of no value. Or you could say that it was here, but at this particular time, it wasn't functioning correctly. So therefore, it was valueless. It was without value. It was, it was here, but it was barren. So you have an earth, but at that particular time, it wasn't functioning or producing anything. So therefore, it wasn't tall. It wasn't tov. It was barren. And therefore, made it a wasteland or a state of waste. So when it says it was without form, the, I, the, that word really lacks in understanding. It means that at this particular time, there was nothing going on that we could see of any value. It was just here without form. And the, la and the next word is the word void, which is bet hey is the root there. And that word is interesting because that word comes from the idea, that word void, comes from the idea of a box. B-O-X. Yes. That's empty. So, so what, you, what you get is without form means at this point it was useless in its current condition. And then void means it's like a box with nothing in it. Not, not this idea of a black hole that's just like what they call black holes in space <laughs> that just suck in things and they go nowhere or just some kind of hollow tube. That's not the picture. The picture void means it, was, it is without. So you had potential in the earth, but at this point, there was no evidence of the potential being actualized or realized. Did that go over everybody's head or are we good? So the, the condition that Moshe is trying to explain to us about creation was when Yah got ready to work with the planet. He was working with something that seemed to be, at this point, unworkable. It was empty. It was void. And um, the interesting thing about this word void, because it's not like an empty hollow tube, but because there's a box, because the root of it is an empty box, it suggests immediately that there should be something then filled. <laughs> this box should have something put in it. Because what's the point of a box if it's just going to be empty? Why have it? Get it? So the idea that, that the writer is trying to say is that the heaven, I mean the earth, was without any type of functioning form. It was, it was empty, if you please, but it had the potential to carry. We use, we use um, that term void sometimes uh, when we deal with matters of the heart, for instance. Let's say, for instance, uh, a person said, like, like Barry White back in the day, he said, I got so much love to give. <laughs> <laughs> And, and say a woman hearing that would say, I have so much room to receive love. You get it? Mm -hmm. 
So the picture is, I've got the box, but it's empty. But there's something wrong with just an empty box. Because the container, by its very nature, says you need to put something in it. So when so the 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 uh, text is really trying to tell us that it is Yah who first of all created heaven and earth, but it's also Yah that fills the heavens and the earth. Y'all got that? All right. Hallelujah. Earth was without form. It was void. And then you have this other word here for darkness. It says, and darkness. Um, Hashik, I think that's how you say it. It represents a dark place. So just write that down. And darkness represents a dark place. And it's the time, it's a time of day where we would call the black of night. Just write that down. So that you, you not only have the earth being without form and void, but you also see another picture here of darkness. You see the presence, if you want to use that term, of darkness. Now, in this instance, not necessarily an evil darkness, just a darkness. At this point in our, in our narrative, it's not necessarily a satanic darkness. It's just a darkness. We would call it pitch black. So you have this idea. Now, now, now you see all these words put together now. Mm -hmm. and, and the earth, the broken shot, was covered with water. And it was without form. Doesn't mean that it hadn't been formed, but that it was in its present state, wasteland. Mm -hmm. And it was empty, like a box. Mm -hmm. And it was dark. And the word there where it says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Of course, I don't have to explain that. The face means the surface part. When you look at a human and you look at the face of a person, you're looking at that surface part of the head that can turn one way or the other. It's, it's, the, it's the face of the head. And in this case, in this case, all of the, the darkness was covering, if you please, the face of the earth. And it literally says, was on the, uh, the face of the deep. Now, write this word down because this is not in your English. The word there for deep is our word for the roar or tumult. And it it is the word, hey, mem is the root. And of course, it is to uh, look toward the water. And here, the roar of the sea is what's emphasized here. That at this point in, the, in time, the sea was already raging. At this point in time, the sea was already turning. It was already tumultuous. It was all, it was already uh, in chaos. It was turbulent. And the, and the picture here is that all of this turbulence and turmoil and chaos that was going on on in the face of the deep was happening in total darkness. And in that particular condition, 
There was no hope. If the earth would have been left without Yah doing something, it would have always been just a dark, roaring wasteland void. There's another word that deals with this idea of darkness, and that's a word like destruction. So this chaos that was happening in this deep, it also had very powerful destructive energy. And if anybody knows the power of a storm, especially the power of a storm at sea, you know it can tear up some stuff. So here's the picture. You see a planet at this point that is a wasteland. It's empty as far as being filled with order. It's out of order. And in its out of order condition, it had the potential to be really a destructive and dangerous place. <laughs> you see that? Mm -hmm. Verse 2 And the spirit. And of course, whew, the root word for the idea of the ruah, the, the root word is two letters. It is resh, head. It is tet, which is a picture of, um, I mean, um, het, which is a picture of a wall that separates the inside from the outside, so when you combine the two, you have man outside. And the idea uh, is, it has to do with the fact that the one in control of the situation, the one that is actually responsible for taking care of the house, the one who actually has the power to do something is now about to move. When, when we talk about the winds of change, have you heard that? Mm -hmm. Like, I can feel change in the air. That's where this story is going. Because, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but what we see here is a change that's getting ready to take place and it's going to be done by the very wind or breath of the one who's responsible for doing it. The idea, the idea is not just breath like breathe in, exhale. No. It's the power that's emphasized here with the Ruach. And it said, and the, the power or the spirit or the breath, the wind of Elohim moved. Now that particular word is very interesting also because that word moved, that word move is where we get our English word to flutter. F-L-U-T-T-E-R. Flutter. It's like uh, to hover like a bird. And oftentimes uh, you will see a bird. Well, if you guys never look outside, but a bird will sometimes flutter or hover like over a nest. 
And the idea is hummingbirds. hummingbirds do it. Yeah, you're right. Is that what is now introduced into creation, Zion, is the power of our Elohim that comes in a form of pure energy that flutters or vibrates over this tumultuous sea, this deep that's dangerous and stormy and, 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 and powerful and it's dark. And it, but, but then you've got the influence of, watch this, and, and, and understand where I'm going. You have now into the scene the influence of a power more powerful than what was going on here. There is interjected into the story the breath of Yah, which has the power to tame the wild, empty, dangerous, boisterous, roaring earth. He comes into the picture and he just broods over, flutters over the whole earth introducing a vibration. Can I use this term? Introducing a vibe. I'm not trying to get too deep here, but before the Ruach is introduced in the scene, Earth has its own vibe. Do you catch that? And it's off. It's void. It's tumultuous. It's dark. The Ruach of Yah now has entered into the picture. And he is about to bring order to this disorder. He's getting ready to bring order to what we see as a chaotic situation. Let's see what he does. It says, hovered upon the face of the deep, on the face of the waters. Verse 3. And Yah said, um, Mu, which is Mim Lamet. It has to do with he spoke. It's, it's, it shows intelligence, Zion. He doesn't mumble here. There, there's no, there's no, there's no weird uh, esoterical speech here. No, there's, there's order. There's thought. There is a connecting of words to make a sentence. And the connecting of these words to make a sentence will then have power to actually accomplish something that he wants accomplished. Watch the text. Watch the text. And Yah said, what does it say in English, verse 3? Let there be light. Let there be light. The root word of that is, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it means exist. So what he says is, and of course the word um, for light, you all remember that one? 
right. Or right. Right. And that word is interesting because that word represents order. So just like the word void represented a box with nothing in it, this particular word is a box that's now going to be filled. The word light in the Hebrew come from the idea that the Hebrews believed it was necessary to have light in order to have order. The Hebrew was like, if you're going to straighten out some things, the very first thing you got to do is you need, we need some light. Remember when the woman in the parable that was told by a king, she lost a coin inside the house. What does it say the first thing she did? Come on, talk about it. When she realized that it was lost, she did what? Yeah. She, she lit a light. Why? Because, because, because light to the Hebrew preceded order. In darkness, there can be all kinds of disorder. All kinds of chaos. All kinds of danger. But when you turn the light on, <laughs> whoo, we I gotta get out of here. I'm starting to feel way too good. When you turn the light on, then you can see what is out of place. You can see what's causing the issue. What's the problem? One of the reasons that evil people like darkness, based not on my words, but based on our king's words, is because their deeds are evil. People like to cover themselves in darkness to perform the deeds of darkness. Now, I'm not necessarily dealing with that tonight, I just want to show you something, that our word for light is connected with our understanding of order. It's biblical. So what does he say? He really says light exists. He really says, order, you are now ordered to exist. We need order. Everybody, everything, calm down. Notice in this text, When he gets ready to give us light, he doesn't have to give us a sun. S-U-N. Biblical cosmology does not believe in an earth that's wrapping itself around a sun. That's not the biblical cosmology. Biblical cosmology has an earth that's lit by the very Ruach of Yah. We don't even need a light source in Genesis chapter 1 until day 4. All we need is Yah's vibe. That's right. <laughs> all, all we need 
is Yah's breath interjecting into the darkness and the chaos that is. And we need him to just speak. And if he speaks, order comes. But if he doesn't speak, then darkness prevails. So when there's no word from Yah, darkness wins. But as soon as Yah speaks, darkness loses. Now, we're going to show you that in a moment. But right now, what we see is that he said, light and light was. Now, now watch this. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. It says in verse 4, and Elohim saw... The idea is he acknowledged the appearance of the light. And of course, you have there the Aleph Tav in Hebrew. You don't see it in English. Which means, and Yah saw, watch this, not just light, but what light pointed to. He saw the light, but not just light. He saw what light would represent. He, he, he saw, he, he didn't just see the light, but he saw, he saw light personified, if you pleased. He saw what or who would be the one responsible for maintaining light and what purpose for it. Because remember, the olive tile represents, of course, the ox, and the tile represents the Mark sign covenant. So the idea is an ox that's working toward a goal. And, and so when you put it together, you see this picture. You see that, that light is not existing for light's sake only. Light is existing to accomplish something. He saw the light, that it was what? Good. Tov. There's the word. Which you already know. It's tet, what? Tet, bet, tov. And, of course, the idea of is good, but the picture is this. A tet is a basket or a snake or surround, Right? And of course, a bet represents what? A, house. a tent or a house, right. And so when you combine the two, it means to surround the house. You get that? So therefore, when, we, when, when you put the meaning, when you put it together, the word tov has to do with a house that is honestly surrounded by beauty and grace and love and health and prosperity or to make it better a functional home so the word tov which is your english word good always has to do with a home that functions properly so the word actually becomes to function correctly or something that is functional Everybody talks about today things being dysfunctional. Matter of fact, I'm just starting to realize everything is dysfunctional. You know, I, I thought I was a, a, a man's man because I, I have a hard time crying. Matter of fact, last few weeks I've been practicing trying to cry. I got, and, and, I, and, and I found out what was wrong with me. I had some dysfunction growing up. Because I, it, ain't, it ain't all the way functional. Even our Hamasiah wept at Lazarus. Uh -huh. 
Am I right about this? Yeah, true. Function, Zion, has to do with that which is beautiful and gracious, but it has to do with the house. Remember, the heavens and the earth will represent the house wherein Yah's creation is going, his prime creation, humanity, is going to live. So he's building a house. And so he sees light as something functional to bring order to the house of creation. You get that, Zion? He sees it. And he said it's good. It's functional. That, that, that is gracious. That is beautiful. Interject, interject that into this situation. And things can actually get better. We're not stuck in the dark with chaos and turmoil. We're not void and empty. Just the vibe of Yah bringing light into the situation, bringing some order. And this is where I'm trying to get to. Watch this. He saw that it was good and Yah, here's the word. What does it say? Divided. 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 Huh. And he did what? Divided. Divided. <clears throat> Divided. The word there, and uh, for those of you who know uh, Hebrew, can probably pronounce this root better than I can. But it's badol, badol, and it means to separate something. Watch this. He does not get rid of darkness. He separates his light from it. Did you catch that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that again because a lot of people are under this weird impression that some kind of way, once we come to a realization that we Hebrews, that all the darkness is going to be gone and it's going to be all light. Uh, no. But what he does do, Zion, he commands separation. He demands division. What he does not want is for this darkness and this light to be like commingling. That's right. That's right. He, he don't like that. Mm -mm. Matter of fact, one time he was talking and, 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 and he said, walk in the light. As he is in the light. Because he that walketh in darkness has no fellowship with Yah at all. I said, whoa. Yeah, this idea of being in this gray area, this blended place. I said, no, 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 no. There's going to be division. Yeah, I don't need a sun or a moon right now. All I need is my word saying, divide the light from the dark. And Yah divided it. Which means, Zion, if Yah divided light from darkness in creation, he's laying down a principle. And that's my whole point. The principle laid down in the first couple of lines of creation is this. From the beginning, Yah knew there would have to be a lot of separating going on 
in order for there to be proper tov or functionality. And people who think that they can go along to get along and believe they're going to have a functioning life, they're fooling themselves because light and darkness by its very nature does not coexist. The division was done by Yah himself. He said, and Yah divided the light from the darkness. <clears throat> now I'm going to, I'm going to spiritualize for, for just one moment. If darkness later on becomes symbolic, of ignorance and rebellion mm -hmm. and what we call witchcraft the worker of darkness you've heard people the, the workers of yeah okay then light will then later become known as Torah or the teachings of Yah the works of light. So here is where my interest is for the children of Israel waking up. We're waking up in a time where darkness is posing for light. And because we don't know Torah, a lot of us are walking in darkness, but we think we're in the light. Therefore, when a person like me, a teacher, a preacher, come around and say, hey, you got to separate yourself from any types of dark teaching. People say, who you think you are? And I'm saying, I got the principle from the Bible. I have worn out the surface teachings of these camps that's out here. These camps have received the majority of their teachings from places of darkness. Simple reading of Torah and you know that there is no hexagram as a shield of David. It's not in the Bible. You don't even have to be deep. Simple reading of Torah will tell you that, watch this, Yeshua's father is Yah. So anybody telling you anything different their source is a dark source. Your job is to separate yourself from that type of so-called biblical teaching. The principle of separation is in creation, which means when you are leaving darkness to walk in light, it is the right thing to do. Now watch this. Now watch this. And I see my time is up. Y'all been kind. I knew I was going to tread a little heavy tonight, but I, I had to do this because, because one of our problems and the reason that we can't fight the devil and we can't whoop this false doctrine and we keep getting tossed to and fro is because without these principles under our belt, a person can come up with anything and we just follow it. Okay, listen to this. And Yah called, oh, I wish I had time for all this, the light he called day. We know that word is yom. 
And of course, the yod represents a hand, mem represents water. So when you combine the two, you have the idea of working water. And of course, it has to do uh, later on, the particular term just begins to start to talk about work period. And so therefore, in the Hebrew mind, when we talk about day, we think about work. Remember the Messiah said, I'm going to work the work to him who sent me while it's day. So day yom is a play on words. The word yom has to do with working. You get it? So I'm going to work while I can work. <laughs> so this is what he does. He takes the light time, the time of light, and he gives it a particular name. Or, better yet, he describes its function. Because it's always function before form. So he said it will be during this time where there is light shining, where you will accomplish, obviously, the majority of all your work. Get it? Again, not to over-spiritualize. But we are now moving into what I consider to be a time of darkness where there's very little light shining. We are almost in what we call the nighttime of life. Of course, the brightest time the planet ever had was when the Messiah himself was here. He said, I'm the light of the world. That was the time that everybody should have got right when our king was here. But then after he left, he told us that we were the light of the world, right? We were the person that was supposed to, we were the people that were supposed to be bringing the teachings of Torah to this world like light shining in darkness, like candles lit in a house or a city on a hill, right? But the reality is, because there's been a famine for the word, there's also been a lack of light, which then means there's an increase of dark, there's an increased darkness. So that, believe it or not, we are wasting the daytime that we have left. Fighting the teachings of darkness amongst our own people. When we should be learning Hebrew, when we should be learning history, when we should be learning Torah, we are spending most of our time chasing down the doctrines of darkness that are coming from those who know that they are Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. And it's sickening. Yes. So the Most High was talking to me about how to help Zion in this hour. And he said, one of the things that I need done in Zion is that my people don't know Torah, therefore they're being tossed to and fro and they don't understand that when you follow Torah, you're going to have to divide. Ain't no other way out. And, 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 uh, and I'll get to that evening in the morning was the first day, but I will bring up this word first. That particular word, ha, is where we get the word aha. What does that mean? Love. First. You know. Love. Come on, dude. Mm. What is aha? Love. It's one. 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 That's right. J. I told you, I put, I put up my six-year-old daughter. <laughs> as far as Hebrew and Bible is concerned, against any Christian pastor on the planet. <laughs> any Christian pastor. And she would win. That's why I laugh about these Hebrews having these debates with Christians. That makes no sense. My daughter could beat all of them. I don't care who you put up. I just ask her a simple question like, what day do you worship? <laughs> Based on the Bible. She'd be like Shabbat. They'd be like Sunday. Bop, you win. The base over. <laughs> so I, it ain't you know. So when I say a hot, she said one. 
So watch the text. You are not going to get a high until you first get light. Do you understand what I'm saying? A high comes after Yah's light has now penetrated the darkness of the chaos that's on the planet. So while you may have had, listen to this, while you may have had time, what you didn't have is a first day. Because the idea has more to do with Yah is now doing something as far as unity that's now based on division. The idea is this. And it's, it's very poetic. It's as though he gathers all the darkness and puts it on this side. And then he gathers all the light and puts it on this side. And the gathering of the light away from the gathering of the dark gives an opportunity for there to be oneness or one day. Or the word better is the chief day. This is how things need to stay. This is how it needs to function. If the rest of the creation is going to work, evening, Got to stay over there. <laughs> Darkness and light got to be over here. And the rest of the time, he's going to keep telling you that that evening and the morning is still in place. Over there and over here. I think y'all caught the point. But before we get out of here with that point, let us go and listen to our king. Matthew chapter 10. And let's look at verse 34. Somebody got it? Yes. Think not that I have come to send peace on the earth. I have not come to send peace, but a sword. Oh, start at 33, please. <laughs> but whosoever shall deny me. Before but whoso whoever shall deny who? Me. Before? Men. Oh, all you Joseph is the daddy. That's denying him. Uh -huh. Uh -uh. All you ain't no, there ain't no Messiah. Not Messianic. That's denying him. Anybody that denies him before man, come on. Him will I also deny mm -hmm. before my father, which is in heaven. Separate yourself from me, which is his teachings too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, believe this. I'm going to separate from you before my father. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. Let me get some of that uh, before we get to that next verse. Let's get some of that John to show light. John 1.1. 1, 1. Just, I don't want nobody to think that uh, the Messiah is not the word made flesh. St. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. Didn't we just read that? And Yah said, mm -hmm. let there be light. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah. The same was in the beginning with Yah. All things are made by him. Did I just tell you that it was the light mm -hmm. and the word? And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the what? Life. Of who? Amen. His life was the light. Of man, which is the same picture of this dark, tumultuous, dangerous, empty, void place. That the first thing that man needs 
in his soul is the light of Yah, which was the life or is the life of the Hamashiach. And the light, okay, okay. Let me get to uh, 14. And the word was made flesh. made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when we are talking about our king, we're talking about the very word of Yah in creation being made flesh, which is Yah's word, which is him made flesh. Now let's go and read what he says in Matthew 10. Now you can see why he says, if you deny me, I will also deny him before my father. And then what does he say in verse 34? Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am not come to send peace, but a sword. Mm -hmm. He said, don't think I came here to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. So do you see how this relates to Genesis 1? Light didn't come into the world to co-mingle with darkness. Nope. Somebody didn't come down here, man, to be like chilling out with the darkness. He said, I came to bring a sword. Verse 34, 35. For I've come to do what? Set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Come on. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Keep going. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Come on. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Come on. And he that taketh not his burden. His cross. And follow me. Come on. And after me is not worthy of me. Verse 39. And he that findeth his life shall lose it. Forty. Oh, keep going. And he whosoever loses life for my sake shall, shall find, find it. Come on. He that, that receiveth you receiveth me. And, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Now, does that sound like to you somebody who's talking about unity at all costs? No. <laughs> Sounds like to me the identifying mark of a true disciple of our king is one who understands proper division. Yes. And if you think you're going to make it into the kingdom trying to blend with everybody, you got another thing coming. As a matter of fact, I don't even have time to deal with this whole thing, but he says, that's why I came. <clears throat> so in the first day of creation, we see the division. We see the Messiah mention it here. Now let's look at John 17, 16, and we're going to wrap it up. John 17, 16. Man, I've been up here a while. John 17, you know, I was sick, so y'all got a whole lot to say. I got to cut it off. <laughs> John 17, <clears throat> verse 16. Let's start at 15. Ooh, I'm sorry, y'all. Let's start at 14. Start at 14. And let's read down. I have given them thy word. I have given them thy word. And the world has hated them. Wait, wait, and the world loved them. Because everybody loved the word. No, the world has hated them. No, no, no. The world made them bosom buddies. The world has hated them. Wait, I gave them my word, and the world hated them. And we get all bent out of shape when we start standing up with the word, and people don't like us. When the Messiah said, I gave you my word, that's why they hate you. Come on. Because they are not of the world, 
even as I am not, not of the world. What do you mean they're not of the world? Are you trying to tell me that those of us who follow the king are not from here? See, what he's saying is we march to the beat of a different drummer. What he's saying is our value system doesn't come from this world's value system. Our worldview is not given to us by the world. Our worldview is given to us by the one who made the world. That's right. Come on. I pray not that Come thou shouldest take them out, out of the world, world but, but that yes. thou shouldest keep them from, from evil. evil. Come on, one more. They are, are not, not of the world, even as I am not, not of the world. Verse 17 now. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. He prayed that you would be divided by truth. Set apart. And he said, and this is what the truth is. Your word. I'm not listening to no commentaries trying to tell me that we don't need to read the word because it don't apply and all that kind of craziness. We're separated by the word. The word is true. So division is necessary. Get over it. It's a principle laid down in creation. I said I was giving me one more, huh? Last revelation. That last book, Revelation, when we get out. The Revelation chapter 18. The line you got? Revelation 18 and 4. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Uh, and I heard another voice say, what? Mm. Blend in. Come out of her, my people. No, get along to get along. Come out of her, my people. Learn from her. Get out. <laughs> get out. That, what I hear is, do not get out. Is get out. Yeah. Separate, divide. Don't let friendships send you to hell. That's right. I love my friends, the ones that I have. I love my family. Uh, but my love have a limit. I won't go to hell for you. That's where I draw the line. Yeah, that's where I draw the line. I, I draw the line when it comes to the word because I've already read division is necessary in this walk. How can two walk together except they be agreed? So we just touched the surface. I'm going to cut this thing short, believe it or not. This is short for me tonight because this is really something I'm going to be dealing with for a while. But I pray, family, that you and I would understand something. False teachers and false prophets will increase more and more and more. Yeah. And you will become more and more, listen, in the minority, not the majority. But it's necessary for the light to be separated from the darkness so that the light can shine.
So no, we're not going along with every wind of doctrine, cunning craftiness, sleight of hand, scripture twisting. We're going to stick with this book. And if the most high keeps breath in my body, my goal is to help Zion get through the whole Torah. I was telling Elijah earlier, uh, today or yesterday, that I want to set it up to where if a brother is struggling in the text and he wants to hear teaching from the ark on what we think or believe and is anywhere in what's called like the Old Testament, that they can type it in. And as a resource, they can just say, I want to know uh, Genesis chapter 15. What does the ark have to say? And boom, Genesis 15 pop up, just like today, Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 through 4. And if the Most High let me do it, I want to do the whole Old Testament. Every word. Because man don't live by bread alone. He need every word that proceeds. And not just me. It's others out there doing it. So I'm not trying to say just me. I just feel like I should be one to help the people know Torah so you won't be caught up and the crazy teaching and doctrines that's coming out of camps and other uninformed, ignorant, even maybe well-intended, but even if they're evil-intended, Hebrews, that's causing abortions in the awakening of the remnant. Hallelujah. We're going to put a stop to it by turning the light of Torah on it. I hope you were blessed. If something was said that encouraged you and you want to support the art, y'all know to go to Awakening Remnant and uh, click the donate button. The Most High bless you. And of course, uh, we have some more announcements and stuff. The Pesach is coming. We've got the website up. Go to Awakening Remnant. Hit the, I think it's under Holy Day. And uh, click that and you will see the information about Pesach. Um, may y'all bless and keep you. Is my prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of division. To be holy means to be set apart. Amen.